Busy week in provincial politics. The newly elected Gauteng Premier Panyazali Sufi announced his executive sacking Nomatemba Mkheti as Health MEC and Park Stau as Economic Development MEC. Now, in Mbumalanga, former murder accused Mandla Mstibi is back, this time as Cooperative Governance MEC. And in Limpopo, three MECs on our job list. Well, to discuss this, we're joined by author and political analyst Ibrahim Harvey. A very good morning to you, Mr. Harvey, and thank you so much for your time. So, I mean, we would have expected these changes to take place in Gauteng with the new premier coming in. But I mean, Stan Matabata is sacking, you know, MEC, some of them that he had sent over for assignments in different parts of, of the country or different parts of the continent. You know, you're seeing uh, some reshuffles happening in Bumalanga. But I want to, let's start with the Stan Matabata in Limpopo situation. I mean, what was his thinking there? I mean, we're trying to understand where, where was his mind when he decided that he's going to be doing what he's gone and done. Yeah, it's uh, very difficult to, to, to say what was in his mind, you know. But uh, I, I, I don't think it was a wise decision to make, and I'm sure many political analysts would be wondering what informed uh, that decision, you know. Um, but uh, certainly uh, lots of, uh, you know, issues there in those regions. Uh, you know, I think every region in Gauteng is, uh, you know, in the broader um, uh, you know, a uh, country, in fact, is afflicted by this worst ever, you know, uh, crisis that we have. And I think sometimes, you know, it also unsettles people who have major decisions to take, you know, and obviously also the factionless politics mm. that is rampant in many areas, you know. And uh, so it's, it's, it's very important to look at that area and see what is going to uh, transpire there. But uh, I was very concerned with the, the developments that you referred to, you know. Yeah. You know, on the other side of it, if we have to go back to the Gauteng province, we obviously anticipated um, the reshuffling of cabinet uh, as uh, the now premier, uh, Bangazali Sufi, comes into uh, his uh, seat there of a premiership. Interesting developments are there, I mean, including the likes, for example, of Jacob Mamabola, who's now been moved to uh, provincial treasury. We understand that uh, Pak Stau is out from the economic, economic development frontier. There has been some reshuffling. Faith Mazubuka retains her positions really as a, a community safety MEC. What's your thoughts, uh, you know, in, in terms of just looking uh, at the new cabinet and what it actually does have to offer? Is it new brooms sweep clean or is it just a regurgitation of what we've come to understand and come to know? And more than anything else, I think the biggest concern is are the people of Gauteng, of the province of Gauteng, safe going into 2024? Yeah, look, uh, you know, there's a, a lot to be said in response to your questions, but... I think it's significant, you know, not to take anything away from Park Star, who I know, but that he was replaced by Tasneem uh, Mutara, you know, I think it's significant and I think it would, uh, it would, might <laughs> yield uh, better results, you know. Look, there wasn't any major changes, you know, uh, uh, the new MEC uh, uh, for Education, uh, uh, Chiloani, was brought in. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good choice. And, uh, you know, the uh, previous uh, MEC for transport was replaced and uh, uh, Jacob uh, Mawabola comes in. But, uh, you know, I don't think that is the, the most important thing because it's a very difficult situation. You must remember that Joburg is the heart, the powerhouse of, of production, nerve, nerve center of the Gauteng economy and the broader national. And that is where I believe the biggest challenges facing Panyaza Le Sufi is going to come from. You know, I mean, Joburg is in, in the biggest crisis ever in the broader mm -hmm. Gauteng region. See what's happening with the coalition governments, etc. And uh, it was significant, however, that he stressed, uh, you know, skills and competency requirements, and they wouldn't be, you know, making any compromises on that score. But let me tell you, his predecessor said the same thing. He said the same thing about, you know, skills development, etc. And, uh, you know, he once again repeated the old uh, rhetoric, to be honest with you, and what has come from it, you know, uh, uh, competent, uh, skilled, uh, developmental state. They've been talking about that for two decades, the ANC. But Gauteng, you know, is the heartland of the economy, and it's very, very important what happens, you know, now that he's uh, in the hot seat. But I'll tell you some significant uh, things I think that he said was, but I think he doesn't understand clearly what he has said. He says that um, it's a very important thing. You see, a social crisis affects health very seriously, and you can see what's happening in our hospitals falling apart. But he wants to change this portfolio to health and wellness. 
And I think not enough thought has gone into that suggestion of his because when you talk of wellness, you know, pivotal to wellness is poverty, combating poverty, unemployment, and so many other facets, facets of the social crisis. So he speaks about an emphasis on nutrition, and it's good, you know, that people must know what to avoid to eat and what to eat, but he doesn't realize that even for that kind of wellness and eating well and healthily, you need money. You see, this is the thing, and, uh, you know, the middle classes can more explore that, but I think that he has not given sufficient attention to and defined what this wellness means and the indicators, you know, for it and the requirements, you know, to live well and so that you, 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 there's more preventative health measures taken to avoid getting into hospital and sick. But, uh, you know, look, I, I, I know him, and I'll be honest with you, I, I, think, I think he's got more chutzpah than, than his predecessor, who I also know. I think, uh, you know, he would be less uh, ambivalent about taking on the tough issues and even taking on the ruling party that is now the premier of, if he feels it necessary, but Yaza Sufi, which is why, I mean, there's lots of things hanging over him, really, his legacy from the MEC for Education, a lot of unresolved issues. But I think that compared to David Makura, really, I think he's, he's more fasted, you know, and more determined and more assertive, which is very important, you know, when you're dealing with uh, 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 the ANC and the ruling party and so on, and especially... You're going to need a new situation in Gauteng to revitalize the economy, which is, you know, down in the doldrums. It's never been so bad. Our whole uh, roads, everything, hospitals has fallen apart. It's the biggest infrastructural crisis ever in the history of Gauteng and Joburg. This is what uh, Banyaza Lesufi is going to inherit from, uh, you know, David Makura. And uh, really, uh, he's going to need to hit the star running and, uh, you know, Clear, with a clear head and vision, uh, aspects of which I think, you know, has, has come through in his speech. But I think uh, it's easier said than done. If you look at the depth of the crisis that is existing in Gauteng, it's good that he's going to ta target the townships, the hostels, and the informal settlements. But what he's making a big mistake about, I believe, is small business in the townships. Oh. If you listen to said basically they want to get rid the, the, that's the ultimate conclusion of foreign based of uh, you know foreigners running small business in the townships etc oh. it's a very explosive and you see what happened before already the violence i think he spoke rather too glibly about this and, and not with the necessary sensitivity and consideration to a very combustible situation otherwise we're going to have very serious you can't wipe away oh. the fact that to uh, People might come from other countries and they run businesses in the townships and get rid of them and replace them with South Africans. No, he, he needs to be very careful, I think, about what he plans to do in that regard. Dr. Harvey, let's look at Mpumalanga. Um, the ANC in Mpumalanga, I think it's, it's fair to say that they've basically told uh, the people of the province and I think the country at large to, we need to just move past the fact that Mandla Msibi is a former murderer accused. Um, they've brought him back in the leadership structures there. They've now even put him up as uh, the Cocta MEC. Should we as South Africans be at that point where we just look past the fact that he's had this dark cloud hanging over him and now actually look at him as, you know, somebody that is working for the province. Look at his work and his work ethic and what actually he does bring to the province. And just leave the past where it is and now look at him and what he is doing uh, with his work. Is that essentially what we are getting from the ANC and maybe where we should be? But we've always got that from the ANC. <laughs> What did they do with Jacob Zuma in, 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 uh, uh, in 2007 when he was elected? I mean, you know, uh, Becky fired him because of the, you know, the, the, the judge Squire's judgment of corruption, etc. Look at what happened with, uh, in, the, 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 in, in KZN. Gumede was re-elected, you know. They, you know, honestly, it's not just in KZN. And I said this on TV or oh, no, radio recently in the past week. The ANC doesn't care too much whether there's been glaring incompetence and often combined with corruption when it re-elects or shifts people around, it doesn't seem, it's a very sad and deplorable facet of the culture of the ANC, you know, and it speaks to what you are saying. They don't care, really. I think it's a, it's a problem with the political mindset, to be very frank with you now, of a, in particular black, well, to, to use the official terminology, black African townships, and membership of the ANC. They really don't seem to care much at all. 
whether you talk of incompetence or corruption, uh, whoever they want to, and often they manipulate it to, to, to vote for and support particular candidates, you know, but it's a very sad reflection on ANC membership. It's been like this for over two decades almost. The ANC doesn't care much about these uh, questions. I think maybe increasingly a bit more on competency. You can see Panyazal is Sufi speech and uh, Apple, he stresses it a lot. But when it comes to corruption and charges that people have faced, they don't seem to care much. And no uh, region has been more brazen in this regard than KZN. And when Pumalanga, as you can see, you know, it doesn't all go well for our politics, really. We need to, the ethical considerations, the moral considerations, whether people have been charged or not, is very important to, to take into account when you decide where to place or not to place such a person and to get rid of people, perhaps, ideally. Oh. But, you know, this is the problem with the, the ANC members in all the regions in the country, but particularly, I think, in Gauteng, uh, in, uh, in uh, KZN and in Pumalanga. You know, when you're saying that the ANC does not care for much, especially around ethical leadership and the likes, and unfortunately these people are being put in governance structures, right? So governance structures and as to the, the Democratic Alliance, obviously their job is to oppose anyways, right? The concern coming in from the DA was that are we not creating more opportunities for the African National Congress to loot, oh. right, when it comes to being um, taking positions within these governance structures? But should they not care? If we're trying to look to 2024, if the, really the end game is to retain power and ruling power, governance power, um, by the time 2024 <coughs> arrives, surely the mandate should be to care. Surely the mandate should be less yes. of the political conundrum and more of a, hold on a second, if we make these kind of political decisions, they will eventually have an impact in how voters see us come 2024 and we risk being the opposition instead of being the governing party. Yes, absolutely. But let me tell you something. You know, when you ask me questions like this, I think back to Halema Matlanti, whose official uh, authorized biography I wrote. He kept on saying, Ibrahim, uh, one of our biggest challenges in the ANC, and it speaks to what you are saying, is a lack of political education and consciousness. And when you lack that, and you know, you have problems in that regard, you're more amenable to, to being manipulated by factionalist forces. And this is what has happened, you know. I mean, uh, the ANC has got very serious. We don't talk about it much. You can see what the... But corruption and incompetence goes from the top of the ANC to the bottom. Oh. Uh, if you thought that workers and ORI members are, are immune to corruption, no. It's gone all over. You know, so to answer your question, obviously, ethical considerations are fundamentally important, especially in an environment rampant with corruption, oh. as is the case. But it's ultimately got to do with the level of political consciousness and education, you know, of uh, the delegates and members of the ANC, and also how factionless uh, uh, conflict has served to undermine that and, in fact, exploit it for the interests of factionalism, because you're not going to have members questioning you much, yeah. you know, uh, in this environment, and they just support uh, people who should not ideally be supported at all. I'll tell you the DA... You can say whatever you want to. The DA is commendable. The DA pays far more attention to these matters than the ANC could ever do. Mm. The DA doesn't just place people. These things about competence and especially a record of corruption is no go for the DA. They will not support, but the ANC will do it. You know, it's a serious problem. It really is. It, it really is. Um, uh, but Dr. Abraham Harvey, thank you so much for joining us here on the South African Morning. That is political analyst Dr. Abraham Harvey, of course. She's speaking to us about uh, the cabinet reshuffles that took place in the three provinces. That's Gauteng, uh, Limpopo and Mpumalanga, of course, with Gauteng uh, bringing its newly elected uh, premier, Banyaza Lisu.